Hello and welcome to K and K Play D and D. I'm. I'm... The... <laughs> I'm the second K car, and I won. I'm the first K, Keith. I lost. <laughs> You're listening to the 15th episode of the Anna and Mokana story arc. This arc has gotten long for us, but it's almost over. Let's get those dice rolling. When I say that it's almost over, I mean there's probably another like 20 episodes. Yeah. Let's get those dice rolling. <laughs> Previously on K&K Play D&D, a group of us traveled to Mokana and we met with the Lady General Tassi. And then we met a kobold. And now we're in the sewers, and you know how much I like that. And apparently we just met a necroman witch. That is to say, a sandwich that has been possessed by the spirit of a recently deceased man. At least Dorn is here to hold my hand through it all. And does anybody mind if I slice the sandwich? You want to attack me, sweetheart? No, I would like to cut you in half. Well then, I'm going to have to say we roll for initiative. I thought that might be the case. We are fighting a sandwich! <laughs> Oh, that's not great. Oh, and I got a 14. Oh, is everybody rolling? Uh, who's who's involved? Is it just Anna? Well, the moment anything starts happening, <laughs> Seastone's getting involved. Oh, that's terrible. That's a seven. Tara will be involved as well. Oh, okay, that's a 21. Okay. Well, if Tara is involved, Milos will be involved. Right, right. Norn is hanging back. This is kind of short range for him. The true is, is a bit... Mm, off with this. And Maximus, it's a lot of people on one thing, so Maximus is gonna hang back to. Right, so Tara rolled a 21, Anna rolled a 14, Seastone rolled a 7. All right, so Tara's first. The Necromanwitch, which is Twiston, <laughs> rolled a 19, but minus five. <laughs> so 14. So it's Tara, Anna. Necromanwitch. Necromanwitch. <laughs> <laughs> Milos got a three plus two, so five. So Seastone goes ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, it is just those five. All right. Char, you're up first. Just a second. You need to tweet this. I need to tweet this. <laughs> All right, Keith. Let me see your beautiful face. Give me that evil DM smile. You're welcome, dear. <laughs> Great. So it is Tar who is up first. Uh, Tar, what are you gonna do? I, uh, I'm just gonna draw my midnight bow real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a 25 to hit. So your arrow lances through the air and spears into the sandwich. That's five points of damage. Yep. Wait, this is a caster. That should have been a D8. Ooh, that's true. Yeah, that's a little bit more like it. That's nine points of damage to the sandwich. Do you know how badly I want to use bad language right now? It is <laughs> yes. very, very difficult. We already had one episode slip through that wasn't exactly what it should have been to maintain our family status. But like, I want to swear so bad. <laughs> Second attack. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, that one's a 15. Plus nine. Yeah. We haven't changed anything on his sheet, Keith, no, since we last haven't. time I played him. Yep. We talked about it, but we didn't actually change anything. <clears throat> nope. So that one was a 15. 15 just hits. Because it's a sandwich. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's not good. Three. And Colossus Slayer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. damage. Because it's damage. Three. So another six. Yep. <laughs> All right. What is happening? <laughs> what is my life? <laughs> <laughs> and Anna, your turn as Tara launches two arrows at this now floating sandwich. Two arrows are sticking through it, and it's like, wow, that's new. Cool. Terrible. That's a 14. That just misses. You swipe, and Twistin floats out of the way. All right, second attack. Natural 20. Do it. <clears throat> Double your dices. So... It's a d10 for slashing damage and a d8 for radiant damage. That is correct. So two of each, or do you want me to roll once and double it? Uh, roll once and double. Okay. Okay. So five on the d10 mm -hmm. is so 10, 10 damage, and two on the d8, which is four, so a total of 14 damage. Plus your strength, so 15. 
Ow. That kind of, you know, like, hurt. So, um... I have a question. How does a sandwich have more HP than Anna does? <laughs> Good question, Sea Stone. But, you know, I didn't quite like that. And so I'm going to do, like, some, some magic-y type thing. Wait, I need to big figure out who I'm going to shoot. So there's four of you guys. And, all right. Why did I roll a d6? I don't know. Let's try that again. All right. I'm going to shoot at lovely, lovely little lady over there who does the Sana Ashun type stuff. I'm going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at her. And that's like 13. It misses. That, yeah. So I'm going to throw my second bolt at her. Uh, that's uh, 18. So that's going to hit her. Anna literally got hit by an Eldritch Blast from a sandwich. Yeah, sweetheart. And so, what the heck am I going to use for the soundtrack on this episode? <laughs> and so that's a total of four. So now her hit points are at 76. She leveled up like, wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. What did, how much damage was that? Four. Okay. So she has 80 hit points right now? Uh-huh. I'm very much okay with that. What level is she? She's level eight now? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Nice to have somebody at my level now. <laughs> uh, uh, my tail goes and bushes out all at once, and the hackles at the back of my neck go mm -hmm. and bush out all at once. And I bare my teeth, and I just sort of, you know, it's instinct. You see something flying in the air, and you swat at it. Yeah. yeah. I'm literally going to do unarmed strikes. He's just That's like, like yeah. a cat. I'm sorry, I'm spitting all over. <laughs> all right, do you? Like a cat, like... <laughs> So, Fl uh, flurry of blows? Bunny. Do I have flurry of blows? You do. How many key points is that? Uh, that's a bonus action after you make your attacks. So you can do you flurry of blows and do four attacks. All right. Well, that uh, sounds well, like you fun. just roll all four at once. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, some of those are not great. So the one that I rolled with Dorn's dice is oh. a 23. Okay. The one that I rolled with my dice is a 15. Okay. The other two don't hit. So two of them will hit. All right. So this is an unarmed strike. So that's a d6. Okay. Oh, it's terrible. It's so terrible. It's a one and a two. So. Four and five. Nine damage. Nine damage. Right. That's not great for him. Ow, that is like bad kitty. I don't like that, bad kitty, so no. Get him, Milos. Um, yes, so this thing is obviously necromantic in its origin and its power status. Um, I am going to, um, I am going to cast, oh gosh, what to do to protect my Lord Tara? He is, I am going to rush forward and smack it with my Warhammer. So he's not casting anything. He's not casting, and that is a 17 plus 5. Heck yes! So that does hit. I'm using it one-handed. So that is a <clears throat> 1 plus 2 is 3, and I cause some damage to it. Uh, I am trying not to block the direction that my Lord Tara will shoot in, but I will also try to protect him with my, my body. And we're back to Tara. I'm gonna take another shot. Go for it. I'm gonna take two shots. Yep. Okay, one's a 17 and mm -hmm. one's a 25. Both will hit. Right, so we've got eight. Okay, so 11 and four plus five for Colossus Slayer. And that's a lot. 19. Yeah. Ow. You know, I kind of think you did more than than the kitty cat did on that. That was like painful. You can see some of my cheeks. All right, so he's a little bit out. calmer than I am. I admit that I am not exactly calm right now. I I really didn't like that. I I don't like that. So I'm gonna do like a reactionary attack here against you, Mister Mister Dragonborn type person, mm. and I'm gonna throw some of my cheese at you. <laughs> And so that's like a uh, 16 for my gooey, cheesy, globby yumness. Uh, that meets his armor class. So uh, you're going to get some cheese damage. Cheese damage. And um, that's a total cheese of... Cheese damage. 
eight plus three. Keith just rolled cheese damage. <laughs> so you get this goopy cheese on you um, because that was that was eight plus three. So 11 points of cheese damage to you, Tara, or a dragonborn man. Yeah. Anna. <laughs> Anna has a very developed ability to accept what is happening. Uh, so she, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's meditation is what that is. So she takes a moment, takes a breath, and she's gonna take two swings with her glaive. Okay, okay. So we have a uh, 25 mm -hmm. and an 18. <laughs> they both hit. Listen to that gorgeous sound. <laughs> oh, love it. All right. Okay, okay. So we've got 8 plus 3 plus 1 is 12. We've got 10 plus 7 plus 1 is 18. So, Anna, you swing your glaive through the air and you slice Tristan in half diagonally, and he's like, Oh, I'm diagonal. Flump, flump. And I'm dead. And you see, like, this the cheese kind of melts up, takes on the form of Tristan, like, as a person, and just kind of falls apart and melts away. And. The Necroman, which is no more. I quickly grab the plate and just like smash it on the cheese. <laughs> Strength check. <laughs> 17. It smashes sufficiently. Just like shards going everywhere. There's a dent in the table and the cheese and the sandwich are all. All right. Well. That was an experience that we shared together, and let's never talk about it again. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I might need some therapy for that, so I might need to talk about that. And all of you kind of pause in the silence after Sea Stone taking the plate and smashing what was left of Tristan several times in the creak of the table as it settles into its new bashed position. Sea Stone's breathing kind of heavily, but the Necroman Witch is gone. Uh, Tara and Anna are both hurt. Mm -hmm. Anna is going to just lay hands on self okay. in order to get back up to her full points. Grandmaster Lord Tara, let me, let me, I did not give him a heal. Cure wounds. Wow. But he does have healing word. That's a D4 plus seven. Uh, that is eight points going back to Tara. Okay. Anna will give him the other three. Your team is wholly healed. Boom! Okay. The room is clear. Um, <laughs> there is a door directly across the room from where you guys came through. It is a wooden door set into you know, the, the carved wall. Adorn is gonna take advantage of the light from Milosha's shield, assuming that that's still there. And uh, he's gonna go check that door for traps and things. Roll me investigation. An 11. <laughs> you can't find any traps that you know of. All right, well, I'm gonna try to open the door. Oh, hit roll me for opening the door. 17. You open the door just fine. Ah. Well, that was... It, it creaks a little bit because it's wooden hinges and all that. But it opens up into equally rough as the room and the secret passage hallway. It's you know, maybe 10 feet wide, but it's running uh, north-south. Glancing to the north to your right, the, the hallway goes a little bit and then turns further west. And then it runs for a good long while south. Uh, you can't really see much more because Milosh's light ends. Mm -hmm. It's like barely to where you are. And you can see that it might be turning west to your right, turning again, and then it just goes on into the dark to your left. Okay. So you can go north or south. I didn't cast anything besides Detect Good and Evil. That is correct. 
So how much longer do I have on it? Uh, you have about like eight minutes. That was not a very long encounter. <laughs> oh, you did get hit. Please make me a quick constitution save. Four. You have lost your spell. Okay. As I recall the map of Mokana, we wanted to head west, southwest? Uh, roll me a history check. This is like Karin rolling a history check. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, you're wondering, trying to wonder where you guys gotta go. You can't fully remember, like, all that. Great. Let's try heading north. You guys go north. Who is leading this time? Maximus still. Maximus still? Okay. Milos is... Well, Maximus with Tara, then Anna, and Milos, and then the other three, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Okay. A Milos still has his light on his shield, so the Dorn and he can see. Uh, you guys go north, maybe 10, 15 feet before it does turn to the west, and 20 feet later, there is a door. This door is nicer, slightly better put together than the, the one leading to the room with Tristan. You know, I can't help but be mighty impressed by the infrastructure of the city. Like, most sewers are not walk throughable like this. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to go through that door? Yeah. You want to check the door or just yeah. go through? Who's checking? Um, not Tara. Not Anna. Let's make Milo check it again. Oh. Of course, I will do it for the glory of Grandmaster Lord Tara Puma. Uh, that is a five plus three. I, as I'm checking it, I pop the door open accidentally, and it is partially open, and I look to Tara, and I say, I have opened the door for you. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. I shouldn't be the first one through, though. Oh, of course. Um, who should? Would you like me to go first, my Lord Tara, the Exalted One? No, you make too much noise. Uh, let's send True. Okay. You want her to go in sneakily? Yes. All right. True is going to stealth into the room. That is a six plus 12. So 18. And she just slides into the room like a shadow. And then she comes and opens the door. It is a room. Are there any sandwiches? I, I'll have to do perception check for her. There are no sandwiches, but there is a body in a in a in an alcove. Like a dead one. Pieces. Pieces of a dead one. Put together. Like stitched together. Yeah. Right. So you know what. The sandwich said about JB putting, like, washing the bones and, like, getting it ready until such time as it was, like, you know, um, like, like, standing or needed to get, get up again. Yeah, but there is, um, there is, Anna, you should, um, come see. All right. True leads you into the room. Uh, as you go in, she skirts this little alcove, like ten feet in, where there is this seven-foot-tall person that is stitched together from different pieces of people. Um, but she leads you to an altar, mm. draped in purple cloth. Uh, there's nubs of candles all over it. Some of the candles are flickering lit and all that still. Uh, some are not, the smoke going up. Um, and there in the center is a broken symbol. Please roll me a religion check with advantage. Natural 20, of course. Uh, it is the symbol of Sana Ashun, you know, a circle with a tree in the center. Uh, the roots and branches entwining around the edges, just like Anna's, but it is broken broken in half. I'm going to take a moment to stop and pray. Okay. Uh, Roll me a flat 20. 15. Every Sana Ashun item you have is glowing during your prayer. 
So my items that are blessed by the goddess are reacting to this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the reaction is, but this is not normal, I will say that. Yeah, this is uh, a uh, strange place. And so there is the altar with the broken symbol draped in purple cloth. Uh, some of the lit candles. So the candles are lit as though somebody is here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are lit. Some of them have burned out. And the candles are all different sizes, different ages. I would like to reach out to touch the symbol, the broken symbol. All right. So just to brush your fingers across, or are you picking it up? Uh, to put my finger, like, to lay my hands on it and continue to pray. Okay. As soon as you touch the symbol, you hear a... <sighs> And the body in the alcove comes forward. All right. Where are the others? Uh, did they come into the room as well? Or oh, is yeah, it just... Every, everybody's in the room. I have a feeling some people were right up by the dude, too. Yep, and it's now there. Who's near the dude? Sea stone for sure. Well, let's roll initiative. All right. Tara got 18. Uh, the, the thing got a 16. Anna got a 15. Niloj got a 7. True got a 6. And Maximus got a 15 as well. Uh, Dorn got an 11. Seastone? <laughs> he got a natural 1, so he got a 4. Okay. So, Tara... Flesh, Maximus, Anna, Dorn, True, Seastone, Milosh. All right, Tar, you see this thing start to move, start to activate as soon as Anna touches the symbol. I cast Hunter's Mark and take two shots. The Midnight Bow. Okay. You have to keep in mind that I have this package from Taff and Teth still on my back. I still have not opened it. You have not. Which I'm starting to, you know, kind of kick myself for. But it's going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. I'm just staying true to character. All right, so we have a 16 and a 22. Both hit. So here's the first one with Hunter's Mark and damage. So that's five plus two is seven. Okay. And this one... Uh, is uh, six plus one is seven. And it, <laughs> at that, it's going to slam its fists at Sea Stone, who is right in front of it. Okay. Taking two shots, that's a 12 plus seven, and a nine plus seven, so 16 and something high. Yep, So both, both hit. hit. Okay, one. Two, three. First punch was a nine plus four, so 13. Okay. And the other one is a 13 plus four. That's a lot. Is, yeah, that is a lot of damage. So how much? 13, 26, 30 points. As it just bam, bam, right into you. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. And uh, now we go to Maximus, who is going to charge up and, well, do his kitty cat thing. Uh, the first one is a six plus nine will hit and an 11 plus nine will hit. So those are uh, cat claw attacks for a total of nine, and seven, 16 points of damage. And then he goes into patient defense. Anna. Um, as an immediate bonus action, I cast on Sea Stone Shield of Faith, which will raise his AC by two for the duration. Okay. So that's my bonus action. For my action, I would like to charge with my glaive. Two attacks. 
Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, one of those will hit. It's a natural twenty. And the other? Is a four. Plus. Eight is twelve. It will hit. No way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I won't be mad about that. All right. So ten and eight. These will be doubled. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a total of 26 plus 1, 27 points. The other, total of 8 points. So your first swing as you're charging through just cuts it right through, like, like almost a disemboweling strike if it had those organs. And the other one is like hacking at its shoulder and it's like, grievously hurt by what you have done to it. It's like... <laughs> Dorn. All right, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark as well and take my shot. All right, go for it. That'll be a 22 to that hit. That will hit. That's two plus four is six for the damage. And one for Hunter's Mark. So seven damage. Yep. Arrow pierces right through. It's... I'm taking a step back, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your pier arrow pierces through the jugular, and if this was a, a regular creature, it would do more damage, but it's not. So it is uh, True's turn, and True is going to um, attack it. That is a... Five plus eight with the short sword. Second attack is natural twenty. Yes. So the first attack will be just a, a normal, uh, not putting mm -hmm. anything special onto it. Uh, that's a, a three plus four, so seven. Now the second attack, which is natural twenty, is going to be with sneak attack, and with uh, radiant sunbolt. So the doubling three d sixes. That is six, twelve. And another 12, 24 points of damage. And it, I, I swing with the first sword and then I jab with the second one and it's it's glowing with radiance and it, it burns through it and it blinding um, a, a lot of us. And that is my turn. All right, so that brings me around. I draw my long sword. Because I don't like this guy. <laughs> yes. That'll hit. 18 will hit. It's a, No, it's a 24. 24 but... will hit. Uh, that'll be five damage. That's my first attack. Okay. Second attack. Uh, seven plus six. That will hit. 13 will hit. All right. I would like to attempt to make this one a stunning strike. Okay. Or do I have to call that before I roll? You don't have to call it before. Right. So it's a constitution save? I have no idea. You didn't write that down on my sheet. It's a constitution save. <laughs> That is a natural 20 plus 4. All right, so you see the ripple of your key go through, and it's just like... All right, all right, all right. All right, so that's 11 points of damage anyway. Okay. And then I get one unarmed attack, don't I? Bonus action, yeah. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, that'll hit. That's a total of 6. Okay. Nicely done. You you do some good damage to it, and Milos comes up behind you. I am going to I am going to heal you, uh, Mister Kitty Cat Person, who is a friend of Grand Lord Master Tower. I mean, so I do have do some, some healing potions, damage. so don't you know? Uh, that is a total of ten points coming back to you. I mean, I appreciate that. And that is a bonus action, and then I am going to ca call uh, uh, Sacred Flame upon this creature, so it has to make a, a Dexterity saving throw to um, not be hit. That is a, a, a 15 minus one, a 14. And my spell safety C is 15, so it fails. Excellent. It takes a full eight points of damage. Cool, cool, cool. As this holy radiant fire from the air burns upon it. Uh, we're back to Tarver. Right. I'm uh, gonna take another two shots. For Hunter's Mark, do I roll that for each shot that lands? Because I definitely did not last time. 
Oh well. Oh, so is Colossus Slayer? Yeah, I rolled a d6 all this recording session instead of a d8. <laughs> it's Good fine, job. it's fine, it's fine. I rolled a 26 and a 10. That will hit. <laughs> this must be like a really big slow thing. Yes, this is a big slow thing. All right, all right. So here's six and uh, six for damage, six for hunter's mark. That'll be three plus two is five, plus two is seven. Eight for Colossus Slayer is, ooh, rolled an eight. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. For my second, five plus two is seven, plus four is 11. So your ooh. arrows fly through the air, going past everyone's head. One hits right next to where Dorn's arrow is in the neck, and you see the neck kind of lose structure going down. The other one hits on the other side, and you hear this and the head falls back, and it just boom, 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 stops and crumples in on itself, losing all structure and rigidity to its spine, and it is dead, doubly. That, sir, was a masterful shot. Uh, thanks, yours wasn't bad either. No, I, good job. I hit it too. You, you did good, Siston. And Drew pats his cheek. <laughs> he kind of, you know, uh, what's the word? Kind of wiggles his head and kind of gets away from her hand, but he's grinning a bit. Okay. The flesh golem falls to the ground after your last attack, just like crumpling all of this life gone. And from its collapsed mound of mismatched parts, this black smoke rises up. Okay. And it it's a black smoke that in the middle seems to be like a humanoid ribcage with arms and the spine just kind of dangling down, missing hips and low and the skull. And these two red orbs, like right where the lungs should be. And then it fades into the wall. Great. Can I have Tar, what is your passive perception? You tell me, boss. Okay. 16, okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Tara and Anna, please make perception checks real quick. <laughs> That's not great. At 15. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, modified 20. Tara, you're more aghast at this thing that just came up out of this creature made of other body parts and then disappearing. Anna... You watching it fade away, you hear the paladin. That's creepy. I don't and like that gone. at all. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> now you guys are alone in this chamber. There is the altar type thing that Anna you were checking out before the flesh golem came alive. Right. Do you want to go back and check it out? Yes, I think I do. So it it's a, a basic altar covered in purple cloth. Has candles on it. Some of them are burned out. Some of them are still burning various sizes. And there's a symbol on it. It's the it's it's my symbol but backwards. Yes. Right. Yes. I remember that. And then also there's the the other your other symbol with the tree and the roots in the circle that's been broken. Alright. And that's all that's in this room now. Cool, 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 cool. 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 Is anyone else feeling like it's time to go? Yeah. I mean, if I go, you mean go deeper in so that we can find the cause of this, then yes, I agree with you, Fool. I agree with just Dorn. 
Thanks, I'm much obliged to you, buddy. I am not sure what that means, but I am as well, yes. And what have you found over here? Uh, this is, well, this is the symbol of my order, except it's backwards. What's that mean? I don't know. Uh, it could be a symbol of distress. It could be a symbol of perversion. I don't know. I would say make a religion check, but you're not proficient in religion, strangely enough. <laughs> not one of mine. I mean, if you want to try to do a religion check. I mean, I might as well. I've got nothing to lose at this point. No. What is that? It's a four. Gross. You can't really, like, you're looking at it and you want to cleanse it, but you can't think of anything that would cleanse it. And all of your experience in your order and everything has not really prepared you for this perversion of your holy order and what you remember of Sana Ashun. Lieutenant Tascara, what are we looking at here? I don't know. I wish I knew what to tell you. It feels like it should be cleansed somehow. I don't mind making a religion check. Go for a dorm. Straight religion, though, right? Alright, this is... It's a nine. This is not a builder altar. No, this, this isn't This isn't even symbols that I recognize as being from a religion of patchwork. No. So I'm on the opposite side of the room. Yeah. And I'm feeling rather uncomfortable myself. Yeah. Is there anything that I notice? Notice about the room? Well, about the creepy, you know, spiritual side of things. Sea Stone, I'll let you do either a perception or a religion. Well, I'm proficient in them both. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, but my wisdom has a slightly... It has a, uh, a three instead of a two. Well, that was gorgeous. I'm scared out of my wits, but it's still a 14. You know, you do get an idea. It's kind of crazy. But, you know, you're sea stone, and you're a monk. My tail is floofed out. Yes. And you, you've been listening to the conversation and what's going on. You know this is Anna's religion or some or weirdness of it. What if she prays? You know, Anna, you know, you could just say a prayer and get it over with, and then we can move on. I mean, of course I was going to do that. Right, well, hurry on with it then. Or Sister True, you're a monk. You should pray. Or you're a cleric. You should pray. I am a cleric of Taff and Taff. I don't care at this point. You could pray to the cheese sandwich for all I care. Just somebody do something and let's get out of here. I did want to try to eat the sandwich. I am slightly hungry. Just, uh, just, just say a prayer. Oh, me. Of course. Miloš walks up to the altar and sets his hands on it and begins this prayer to Taff and Taff in his very Milošian way. Mm. Now, it it is beautiful if you understand what he's talking about, and he's talking very deeply and very earnest and devoutly of Taff and Teth, a facet of the twin gods that people rarely, rarely see or feel because of their twisted nature. And you feel with Milosh, he's pouring his heart and soul into this prayer just as he's given them over to Taff and Teth. And there are tears coming down his face as he's praying in earnest to his gods. Most of you have never seen someone pray like this to Taff and Teth, 
because... No, it wouldn't have even occurred to me that somebody could cry to them. Yes. Except in frustration, maybe. Anna, can you give me a perception check while you're watching? Nope. Heavens, Anna. Really, really not paying attention at all to him. I'm saying my own prayer. Of course. As you're saying your prayer, you do feel a presence around you. Mm -hmm. But when your prayer ends, it kind of washes around the room and then not fades, but fades. Mm -hmm. Tar, give me a perception check. Eight. Eight? No. Eleven. 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 <laughs> Very nice, Tar. You, you're more creeped out by... Milosh's prayer to... I don't pray to anybody, really, especially not this earnestly. No, no. Eventually, he stops, wipes his face with his right hand, turns around, blinks his eyes open, looks at Tar, and bends double in half in this huge bow of reverence to the Grand Master Lord Tar. That was very moving. Dorn approaches the altar, mm -hmm. pats it. All right, bro, here's the deal. We know this place is messed up. We also know that we can't get through it on our own wisdom. You're the guy to change and things in here need changing. So, you know what to do. Check in with you later. Amen. Dorn. You get inspiration for that. That was beautiful. <laughs> That's how he do. That's how he do. I love it. All right. So the lot of you finish up in the room with your various prayers and whatnots. And you head back into the hallway. Who's taking point? Oh, Seastone probably. Seastone's <laughs> taking just point. Wanting to get out of this place. All right. So where do we go from here? All right. So you... you Go back into the hallway, take the curve that goes past the room that had Twistin' the sandwich in it, and you continue down this for quite a while. I mean, this is dark. There's no torches or anything through mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So most of you have some sort of dark vision. The only ones who don't are Milos and Dorn. Mm -hmm. Dorn is probably holding on to Seastone's tail again. No, he wasn't holding on to my tail. Oh, you are holding on hands. Right. You know, right, it's easier right. to keep track of a skinny lad like him if you've got, you know, mm -hmm. easy access. So, Seastone, you're leading the charge. I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> you're leading the way. No. No? I was the, you asked who was the first one out of the room, okay. and I said I was, but I didn't say I was leading All it. Right. Who's leading the way now? True. Yeah? You're in front. D why? Because I don't want to be. I've got a human who can't see. I've, I've got a cat, and she pulls up Maximus by the rub of his neck. Ow. I don't truly understand what's going on, but surely one of you could just take some steps in a forward direction. I can take the point. Milos, can you see in this? I will cast light upon my shield or my hammer, and then I would be able to see. Do we want to give away our presence like that? Oh, that may cause a problem. Sister True, if you would be so kind, you can send Maximus in front. <sighs> yeah, yeah. True goes in front, leads the group, tail swishing. She leads y'all through this dark corridor for another 50 feet and then stops. Dorn, please roll me a 20. Am I checking anything in particular? No, I just want to see what you got. A seven. All right. You do crash into Sea Stone as he stops because <gasps> True stops. <clears throat> and behind you, Milos crashes <laughs> into <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Because Milos rolled a one. You know, it's a good thing that we weren't uh, attempting to be really quiet. It's a 
good thing. There's a, um, a, a cross roads. We could go left or we could go straight. Um, I, yeah. Which, which way? Oh, gosh. We have a choice. Grandmaster Lord, my favorite chosen one of the gods, Taror, which way do you think we should go? And Tar considers for a moment, then reaches down to his belt, and you have to keep in mind this guy's exhausted. So he reaches into his belt, pulls out a silver piece, flips it. <laughs> I say we go left. Yeah. That's a right. highly scientific way of deciding if my ears don't deceive me. That is a very fateful way of deciding, Lord Tara. I like it. True leads you left onto another, into another corridor, goes for a while, and then she turns and it heads back south. And after maybe another 40, 50 feet, stops at a door. Well, this is something. She checks it. Ah, uh, the, uh, the door is locked. Well, knock on it. Maybe somebody's inside. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, what if, what if the person inside is somebody that we would prefer didn't know we were here. Who would that be? Oh, I don't know, the necromancer, maybe. Yes, what did the sandwich call him? J.B. That was what the sandwich called him. Well, he's going to know us one way or another, isn't he? And I'd prefer to knock and have the door open than destroy it unnecessarily. Does um, someone have knock picking tools? And, and there, there you, you have it, it another it. episode of KK by D&D is in book. the books. That was episode 15 of Anna in Mokana. <laughs> yeah, so that's fun. <laughs> do you have lockpicks? Uh, I do not. I, I do not. In fact, I either. don't I don't know which of the characters have lockpicks. I guess we're going to find out. I do. If you have lockpicks, you can let us know about that on social media. <laughs> Please let us know. K and K play D and D at all of the places. Most of them, anyway. Music was written by me and Keith. Me, yay! Backing tracks was uh, tabletop audio. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Always good stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's more that we should be talking about. Hit like, hit subscribe. Is there a subscribe? Oh, we have a Podbean, and oh, yeah. I'm re-uploading uh, old episodes, and those are going to Spotify. So if those places make sense to you and you have some nostalgia, go listen to old episodes there. Yeah, and YouTube. Oh yeah, 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 Yes, Actually, very professional. We're yes. not professionals because we don't make any money on this. <laughs> we are us. Yes, accurate. <laughs> very. <laughs> oh, my word.